Ang guilty feeling sa'yo. What you feel is guilt. Take note. Not condemnation. But conviction. Nakukonvict ka. Bakit mahihiya ka sa Holy Spirit? Eh? Kung bakit mo nagawa yung bagay na yun? Ganun po kalakas ang power ng Holy Spirit in convicting us. Now apparently, another reference about the Holy Spirit in Hebrew is found in Hebrews chapter 10. For your information, this is another debatable issue in the Bible. But definitely, this is not for non-believers. Because Paul said in Hebrew chapter 10, verse 26, if we willfully sin, kung babasahin po natin yung talata niyan. So, una-una, Paul said, if we, so take note, inclusive, kasama siya, sabi niya, tayo. Kasama siya po dun, pati yung mga mananampalataya. So, if we sin willfully, kung ginusto daw natin magkasala. Now, the Greek term carries the idea of deliberate intention. That is habitual. Meaning to say, yung pong sinasadya mong gawin, yung pong paulit-ulit, ginajustify mo pa, ine-enjoy mo pa ang kasalanan, ay wala na daw sakripisyo para sa kasalanan mo. At mas matindi po kapag ang kasalanan po natin is rejecting His word. Yung pong halos ayam mo ng paniwalaan ng salita ng Diyos dahil sa sin na ginagawa mo, hindi po maganda yan. These are not isolated acts, mga kapatid. According to the Mosaic legislation, such acts of deliberate, take note, deliberate, premeditated sin required exclusion from the congregation of Israel. So, ibig sabihin yung taong pong gumagawa ng sinasadya at pinagplanuhan mo pa na kasalanan ay kinakailangan pong alisin sa bayan ng Israel, sa kongregasyon ng Israel, or will be cast outed, or magiging outcast ka. In the book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 30, But the person who does anything wrong, willfully, ulitin ko, willfully, and defiantly, whether he is, a, he is native born or a stranger, that one is blaspheming the Lord and that person shall be cut off from among his people, excluding him from the atonement made for men. Next, naniniwala po ako that the Holy Spirit brings us into the knowledge of truth in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. Who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth? Alam niyo po, the best example is Judas Iscariot. Siya po yung isa pong disciple na ating Panginoon who had no lack of, take note, who had no lack of knowledge. And yet, intentionally and deliberately or willfully betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ for 30 pieces of silver. Alam ni Judas ang katotohanan. Pero sinadya niya pa rin niyang ipagkanulo or ibetray po ang ating Panginoon. And the Bible narrated na ito po si Satan entered Judas. So sisisihin natin si Satanas na sa nagawang pagtatraidor ni Judas kay Lord. Tama. Mali. Yung may katawan ang mananagot palagi. Tayo po yung gumawa ng kasalanan o pagkakamali. Kahit inspired ng evil spirit yan o inspired ng laman yan o ng world or influence ng world, tayo ang mananagot niyan sa harapan ng ating Diyos. Ganun lang po kasimple. While ito pong phrase, no longer sacrifice, once you turn your back from the Lord or sa salita ng ating Panginoon, tinalikuran mo siya, there is no more salvation because rejecting His Word means rejecting Jesus Christ, the only sacrifice that can cleanse you and me from sins. Pag nireject natin ng ating Panginoon. Kaya nga po as a result, in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 27, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment. Uulitin ko, fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. Ganyan po kalagim ang kasasapitan ng mga nagre-reject sa Lord at sa salita niya. Fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation. 
such judgment, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, is that of eternity in the lake of fire. Yan po yung habang buhay na parusa na nandun ka sa dagat-dagat ang apoy. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 42, And will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Now, moving on. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 29, of how much worse punishment do you suppose will he be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing, and insulted the Spirit of grace? First, how much worse punishment? Gaano daw katindi or kalala ang parusa? That means, mga kapatid, there will be a degree of punishment in hell. In Matthew chapter 11, verses 21 to 24. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say to you, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in the day of judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, who are exalted to heaven, will be brought down to Hades. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. Verse 24, But I say to you, that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for you. Brothers and sisters, yung pong mga salitang more tolerable, take note, more tolerable. Ibig sabihin po ay may iba't iba pong degree, iba't ibang level ng parusa sa impyerno. Pero ang worst na tatanggap po ng parusa ay yung pong nagre-reject ng salita ng Diyos, lalo na po yun nakaalam na ng katotohanan pagdating po sa salita ng Panginoon. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 21 to 22, basahin po natin sa Tagalog para mas maganda. Mabuti pang hindi na nila nalaman ang daang matuwid kaysa Pagkatapos malaman ng banal na utos na itinuro sa kanila, ay talikuran nila ito. Uulitin ko, mabuti pang hindi na nila nalaman ng daang matuwid ang sabi ng Bible. Kaysa pagkatapos malaman ng banal na utos na itinuro sa kanila, ay talikuran nila ito. Verse 22, Ang nangyari sa kanila ay nagpapatunay na totoo ang mga kasabihang Ang aso pagkatapos sumuka ay muling kinakain ang nailuwana at ang baboy na pinagliguan ay bumabalik sa putikan. Ganyan po katindi ang warning ng Holy Spirit sa mga sinasadyang tumatalikod o tumaligod sa Lord at pinagtitigasan pa na ang puso laban sa Panginoon sa kanyang banal na salita. Kayo di sa iglesia o sa church. Second, the phrase trampled the Son of God. In the ancient Near East, one of the gestures used to show contempt. Pag sinabi natin contempt, it is the feeling that a person or a thing is beneath consideration. A gestures used to show contempt sa isang tao for someone was to lift up the foot against or toward them. So para bang ipinapakita nila yung paghamak po sa tao, ang kanyang pagtataas po ng paa, or para bagang inaambaan po siyang sipahin. So para bagang itinataas na ganyan, mga kapatid. So yan po, nakikita po natin sa picture. So parang tinataas mo ganyan. So wag yun ang intindihin yung paa ko, talaga maigsi po yung bias ko, mga kapatid. So ganun po ang nangyari. In the book of Psalm chapter 41 verse 9, Even my own familiar friend in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. So, or, to walk on top of someone. So, ibig sabihin, para bagang aapakan mo, in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 19, basahin po natin again. But you are cast out of your grave like an abominable branch, like the garment of those who are slain. Trust through with a sword, 
who go down to the stones of the pit like a corpse trodden underfoot. So, ibig sabihin yung pong pag-apak sa tao. So, kung maalala po ninyo yung pong istorya po sa book of Joshua, chapter 10, kung di ako nagkakamali, nung mahuli po yung pong limang hari na nasa loob po ng kweba, no, paglabas na itong limang hari na ito, pinatapakan po ni Joshua sa batok. Lahat ng limang hari na yun. Ganyan po ang ginagawa daw po natin sa Lord. Pag tumatalikod po tayo sa Kanya, nire-reject natin siya at ang Kanya po mga salita. Now, let's go to the third. And sabi, the blood covenant counted common. Now, to treat Christ's blood as something common. Ulitin ko, ang pagturing po sa dugo ni Kristo na pangkaraniwan lang is the same thing as saying as it is unclean or defiled. So para mabagal sinabi mo na rin na marumi po yung dugo ng ating Panginoon. And it implies that Christ was a sinner and, and a blemished sacrifice. So lumilitaw na si Kristo po ay makasalanan at may bahid ng karumihan ng kanyang katawang inalay. Yan po ang ibig sabihin ng treating the blood covenant as common. Pang-apat, insulted the spirit of grace. Now, the dame titled is utilized in Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. Pag sinabi natin, dame, it is a woman who has been given a title as an honor for something she has done. Now, sa Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10, basahin po natin. And I will pour on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace. Take note, the spirit of grace. And supplication, then they will look on me whom they pierced. Yes, they will mourn for him as one mourns for his only son and grieve for him as one grieves for a firstborn. So meaning, brothers and sisters, rejecting Jesus Christ and His Word insults the Holy Spirit who works through Him. Ganun po katindi. Iniinsulto po natin ang Holy Spirit. Kaya nga sinabi po sa Matthew chapter 12, verse 32, Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man it will be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, I will say it again, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, ang sino man, ang magsalita, pag again sa Espiritu Santo, ano mangyayari? It will not be forgiven. Hindi daw patatawarin. Either in this age or in the age to come. Ang sabi ng Lord, pag pinusong at ininsulto mo ang Holy Spirit, ay walang kapatawaran. Ganyang kabigat ang pagpapahalaga ni Jesus Christ sa Holy Spirit dahil siya mismo yung Spirit ng Diyos. And I believe, that the author of Hebrews refers these verses, though its context, to the Hebrew Christians who were converted to Christianity, but because of persecution, returned to the sacrificial system of offering bulls or goats. Balik po sila or anything else to try to make things right with the Lord. Dahil nga po sa persecution, bumalik po sila sa dati po nila mga practices na pag-aalay po ng hayop. But then... I believe, mga kapatid, that these verses can also be applied to a believer. Sa atin po, definitely yung hindi pa baptized ng Holy Spirit. Take note, yung hindi pa po baptized ng Holy Spirit who totally turned his back from the Lord. In fact, in Romans chapter 11, verses 18 to 22, Wag kang magmalaki sa mga sangang pinutol Alalahanin mong hindi ikaw ang bumubuhay sa mga ugat. Ang mga ugat ang bumubuhay sa iyo. Verse 19, Sasabihin mo naman, pinutol ang mga sanga upang ako'y maidugtong. Totoo yan. Pinutol sila dahil hindi sila sumampalataya. Uulitin ko, pinutol sila dahil hindi sila sumampalataya. Ngunit, ikaw naman ay nananatili sa puno Dahil sa iyong pananampalataya, kaya't huwag kang magmalaki sa halip ay matakot ka. Verse 21, Sapagkat kung ang mga tunay na sanga ay hindi pinanghinayangan ng Diyos, ulitin ko, sapagkat kung ang mga tunay na sanga ay hindi pinanghinayangan ng Diyos, ikaw pa kaya ang panghinayangan niya? 
Dito'y nakikita natin ang kabutihan at kabagsikan ng Diyos. Naging mabagsik siya sa mga hindi sumasampalataya sa Kanya. Subalit, mabuti siya sa inyo. Kung mananatili kayo sa Kanyang kabutihan, kung hindi, kayo may puputulin din. So, malinaw na sinabi ng Bible sa mga taga-Roma at kasama po tayo na kung yung mga Israelita ay hindi po pinanghinayangan ng Diyos, tayo pa kayang mga Gentile na dinugtong lang. Mabagsik daw siya sa hindi po nanalig po sa Kanya. Subalit, Mabuti sa ating kasi nga po nanalig po tayo kung nananatili tayo sa kanyang kabutihan. Kung hindi, tayo naman daw ay puputulin. Paano ngayon nating sasabihin yung sinabi po sa Hebrews chapter 6 at sa chapter 10 ay para lang po sa mga Hebrew Christians. Kaya nga po mga kapatid, To all to God be the glorious who are watching right now, to all Christians who are watching right now, makinig po tayo at sundin po natin lagi ang sinasabi po ng Holy Spirit. Now, moving forward, there is another emphasis on the role of the Holy Spirit in the inspiration of the Scripture. It occurs in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 8. The Holy Spirit indicating this. So take note, the Holy Spirit indicating this, that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while the first tabernacle was still standing. So ibig sabihin po, ipinapahiwatig po or sina, sa, sa, ang sabi po ng Holy Spirit na yung pong daan patungo sa pinakabanal sa lahat ay hindi pa po na ipapahayag habang nakatayo pa po yung unang tabernakulo. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 9, it was symbolic for the present time in which both gifts and sacrifices. So take note, both gifts and sacrifices are offered which cannot make him who performed the service perfect. Ulitin ko, which cannot make him who performed the service perfect in regard to the conscience. So tahasan sinabi po ng author na ang mga gifts po, yung po mga sacrifices ay hindi po nagawa maging perfect ang, ang nagala aalay dahil ito po'y dugo lang po ng mga hayop, katulad po ng mga goats, katulad ng mga lambs po na yan. And the rituals were very frightening, nakakatakot po yung mga ritual po nila and exclusive because the high priest po entered the most holy place, papasok po siya sa most holy place at the rest of his own death. So kasi nga po, pwede po siyang mamatay kapag hindi po siya karapat dapat. Kaya sa Hebrews chapter 9, verses 23 to 24, basahin po natin. Therefore, it was necessary that the copies of the things in the heaven should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ has not entered the holy places made with hands. Again, Christ has not entered the holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Meaning, kaya't si Jesus Christ ay hindi na kailangan pumasok sa Holy of Holies. Gaya nga po ng ginagawa nga po ng mga high priest back then dahil inalay na po ni Kristo minsan lang ang kanyang buhay para po yung dugo or ang dugo po niya ang huhuga sa ating pong mga kasalanan. At nung mamatay po siya, nahati po yung tabing, yung pong veil ng Holy of Holies. Ibig sabihin, yung pong mga anak ng Diyos, nung nahati po yun, ay pwede na po tayong dumiretso sa Diyos. Pwede na tayong mag-pray directly sa ating Panginoon, humingi ng tawad sa Lord. Yun po ang ibig sabihin nito. Kaya po in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So, directa na po tayo sa trono ng ating Panginoon, sa throne of grace, basta in the name of Jesus Christ. 
While in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 15 to 17, but the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us. Take note of the word witnesses. The, but the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us. For after he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds I will write them. Verse 17. Then he adds, their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. So the writer confirms his interpretation of Psalms 40, verses 6 to 8. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire. My ears you have opened. Burn offering and sin offering you did not require. Verse 7. Then I said, Behold, I come in the scroll of the book it is written of me. I delight to do your will, O my God, and your law is within my heart. The psalmist said, brothers and sisters, sacrifice and offering you did not desire. Then, behold, take note and sabi, I come. Ulit, ulitin ko, I come in the scroll of the book. It is written of me. Yan po ang sabi. Darating ako sa scroll or sa Biblia or sa libro or isang libro na nagsasaad ang tungkol sa akin at ang batas mo ay ilalagay sa aking puso. The writer confirms his interpretation, ito pong Psalms chapter 40 verses 6 to 8 by repeating from Jeremiah chapter 31 verses 31 to 34. So basahin po natin ang Jeremiah. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant. Take note, I will make a new covenant, nasabi, with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their father. So, hindi na daw katulad nung unang covenant. In the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke, Though I was a husband to them, says the Lord. Verse 33. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. Again, I will put my law in their minds at isusulat ko sa kanila mga puso. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Verse 34. No more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they all shall know me. Wala na daw magsasabi sa kanyang kapwa ang kilalanin mo ang Diyos, dahil lahat sila ay makikilala ako. From the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and their sin, I will remember no more. Now, which was quoted naman po in Hebrews chapter 8, verses 8 to 12. Because finding fault with them, he says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Because they did not continue in my covenant, and I disregarded them, says the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Verse 11. None of them shall teach his neighbor and none his brother, saying, Know the Lord for all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. So that means, yung pong Hebrews chapter 10 verses 15 to 17 is a part of the whole of an internal witness to the inspiration of the scripture. So meaning to say, ang Holy Spirit po ang nagwi-witness sa mga silitang sinabi sa Hebrews chapter 10 verses 15 to 17 at sa lahat po na nakalagay po sa Bible. And take note, the writer of Hebrews agreed with the Lord Jesus Christ in Mark chapter 12, verse 36. 
For David himself said, By the Holy Spirit, ulitin ko, by the Holy Spirit, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. And even si Peter po in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 21, For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. As well as si Pablo po in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. But significantly, the word witness, yung salita pong witness, is in the present tense. So pag sinabi natin present tense, it is a tense expressing action that is currently happening. Yung pong pangkasalukuyan. Although, the scripture does not consist of words written on paper or some other surface. Bagamat ang kasulatan po ay naglalaman po ng mga salitang nakasulat sa papel or kung anumang mga material. It is a living witness. Not a dead one. Hindi po yan patay. Buhay po yan. Buhay na witness po yan. It did not merely speak in the past, but continues to speak or patuloy po na nangungusap. As Stephen testified that the word of God is a living oracle. Or pag sinabi natin oracle or sangguniyan o propesya na pag now ibig sabihin it means a priest or pra, pra, priestess acts as a medium through whom advice or prophecy was sought. So in Acts chapter 7 verse 38, this is he who was in the congregation in the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him on Mount Sinai and with our fathers, the one who received the living oracles to give to us. That means, as far as the word of God is concerned, mga kapatid, ang Holy Spirit ang witness sa bawat salita na binabanggit sa Bible. The role of the Holy Spirit is to give witness to every word na, na written in the Bible. At yan po ang isa po sa pinakamatinding role yun ng Holy Spirit. Ang i-inspire niya po yung bawat salita na sinasabi sa salita ng Diyos. Kaya nga po sinabi po ng Lord sa John chapter 6, verse 63, My words are spirit and they are life. Ulitin ko, ang salita ko ay spirito at buhay. It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. And that is the reason kung bakit po every time na nakakapakinig po tayo, nakukonvict po tayo. Kasi nga po, inspired po ng Holy Spirit po yung pong mga napapakinggan po natin. Every GBS, every Sunday service, or even yung mga SFDs po natin, yung mga Bible studies po natin. Inspired po yan ng Holy Spirit. At ang Holy Spirit din po ang nag-witness sa atin tungkol sa new covenant ng Lord sa atin na yung pong mga salita niya ay iuukit na niya sa puso at sa isip na po natin at hindi na po sa bato. That is why, brothers and sisters, this is the Holy Spirit in action in the book of Hebrews. So sa pagkakataon pong ito, muli tayo po'y magpasalamat sa ating Diyos na buhay. Tinuruan niya na naman po tayo regarding po sa Holy Spirit kung ano po ang meron o ang rolyo po ng Holy Spirit po dito po sa aklat po ng Hebrews. So tayo po lahat ay yumuko. Magpasalamat tayo sa ating Diyos. Tayo po'y manalangin. Panginoon, minsan pa kami po'y nagpapasalamat sa mga salita mo. Salamat muli, pinakita mo po sa amin kung gaano po ka-importante, kung gaano po kahalaga yung rolyo ng Holy Spirit dito sa Book of Hebrews. Dalangin namin, Panginoon o God, na kami po ng mga nakakilala sa iyo ay tulungan mo makasunod sa mga salita mo. Tulungan mo, Panginoon o God, na maging matibay po kami sa pananampalataya sa pamamagitan ng pag ng Holy Spirit mo po sa aming mga buhay. Kung pong hayaan na dumating po kami, sa punto na aming mga buhay ng pangihina na sa gayon kami magkaroon ng duda tumalikod sa iyo. Lord, ayaw po mo namin mangyari ang mga bagay na ito, Lord, na kung minsan, Panginoon o God, sa dami ng problema, ang iba po sa amin 
Nahihirapan minsan, nag-iisip ang iba at tumalikod na sa pananampalataya. Dalain ko, Panginoon, O oh God, through the help and through the power of your Holy Spirit na muli mo kaming palakasin. Hayaan mo ikaw ang patuloy na magtuwid sa amin, mag-guide sa amin, Panginoon, ang tumulong po sa amin, ang makasunod at mapagtagumpayan kung ano man, Lord, ang lahat na aming mga pinagdadaanan. Ayaw po namin, Panginoon, na abutan mo po kami na wala po sa kalooban mo. Gusto po namin makarating sa kaharian mo. Kaya't hayaan mo, Panginoon, sa araw-araw na aming mga buhay ay magmanifest po, Panginoon, ng Espiritu Santo sa amin. Hayaan mo kami ma-feel ng Holy Spirit mo araw-araw, Panginoon. Ikaw po ang manguna po sa aming mga buhay, Panginoon. Huwag mo kami hayaan matulad sa iba. Panginoon, minsan nakakilala pero tumalikod, Panginoon, O oh God, sa iyong mga salita or nireject ka, Panginoon. Bagos patuloy, O oh Diyos, gawin mo kami matibay. Hanggang sa pagbabalik mo, abutan mo kami, Panginoon, na kami nananampalataya sa iyo. Maraming maraming salamat po sa mga salita mo. Salamat, Panginoon, sa patuloy, Panginoon, na pag-i-impart mo sa amin ng Holy Spirit. All of these things we ask in your most precious and wonderful name, in the name of Jesus. Amen. And to all our first-time viewers po, ngayon po narinig po natin ang kahalagahan po ng hindi po pagtalikod sa pananampalataya. Al- alam nyo po, ganyan po ka-importante ang faith po sa atin. And to have faith in Jesus Christ is also to believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Kaya alam po ang tanong, What is the gospel of Jesus Christ na kailangan po natin paniwalaan po ito? Pag sinabi natin may faith tayo kay Kristo, dapat maniwala din po tayo sa gospel ng ating Panginoon. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 to 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, which also you received and in which you stand, by which also you are saved if you hold fast that word which I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Now, the Gospel of Christ is about the death of Christ, the burial of Jesus Christ, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ that we need to believe. Kailangan maniwala po tayo sa gospel ng ating Panginoon. Kaya lang po, right, after we believe, hindi po dyan natatapos. We need to apply that gospel to ourselves. Sa paano pong paraan? By obeying the gospel. In the book of Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, first is repentance. Repentance symbolizes the death of Christ. Tayo naman po'y magsisisi naman po ng ating po mga kasalanan. Yan naman po'y para bagang pinapatay po natin ng ating mga kasalanan kasabay po ng pagkamatay ng ating Panginoon. At naniniwala po ako, no matter how big your sins are sa harapan ng ating Panginoon, katulad ng ating po napakinggan ngayon na pag tayo po'y nagsisi, if we confess our sins, He is willing and able to forgive our sins as long as nandun po yung genuine po na bagsisisi po sa atin. Yan po yung unang step. We need to repent. Second, we need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ which symbolizes the burial of Jesus Christ. So para bagang inililibing naman po natin ang ating mga kasalanan, kasabay naman po ng paglilibing kay Kristo. So ang mangyari po dyan, babautismohan po tayo sa tubig in the name of Jesus Christ. Hindi po yan paghuhugas lamang po ng katawan kundi yan po nakakapag-alis po ng kasalanan. Yan po yung pangalawang step. We need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And thirdly, we need to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit which symbolizes the resurrection of Jesus Christ or yung muli pong pagkabuhay ng ating Panginoon after three days. In fact, Once we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, we are also receiving power. Power saan? Power to overcome all our weaknesses. Marami po sa atin gusto natin magbago pero nahihirapan po tayo. But you know what? Once you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, yan po power na yan, yan po yung tutulong po sa atin para ma-overcome yung mga kahinaan po natin, ma-overcome yung mga gawa po ng flesh and even overcome all the powers or the works of the evil forces of darkness 
Yan po ang tutulong po sa atin. Ang Holy Spirit din po ang mag-guide po sa atin para makasunod po sa kalooban ng ating Panginoon. So unang-una mga kapatid, we need to repent. Second, we need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And thirdly, we need to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that is what we call the good news. And that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. So at this moment, sa lahat po ng gustong tumanggap sa ating Panginoon, Pwede po ba na yuko po ninyo inyong mga ulo, taas po ninyo inyong dalawang kamay and please repeat after me with this prayer. Panginoong Jesus, lumalapit po ako sa iyo bilang isang makasalanan. Patawarin mo po ako sa lahat ng aking mga pagkakamali at pagkukulang. Sa oras na ito, tinatanggap po kita bilang saliling tagapagligtas at tinatanggap po kita bilang Diyos ng aking buhay. Naniniwala po ako na ikaw ay namatay. Ikaw ay nilibing. Ikaw ay nabuhay na magmuli pagkatapos ng ikatlong araw. Tulungan mo po ako makapagsimula ng bagong buhay. At idagdag mo po ako sa iyong kaharian. Maraming maraming salamat po sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. So sa lahat po ng mga interested po magpababdise, sa po mga telephone numbers po natin sa, mga, sa baba po ng mga screens po ninyo, pwede po kayong tumawag dyan. Or you can also message us directly sa ating pong Facebook page. Pwede po kayong mag-message dyan. Mag-leave lang kayo ng message para sa gayon na kung may mga questions po kayo, ay masagot po or kung gusto nyo po magpababdise, makapagpa-schedule po tayo. So again, pwede kayong tumawag, pwede kayong mag-message po sa ating pong, uh, FB page. So once again, on behalf of our beloved Bisha, pagpalain po kayong lahat ng ating pang- and to God be all the glory.